Hey there, welcome back to the Movie Review Mom YouTube channel. But if you're brand new, yay, you're finally here. I've been waiting for you. My goal is to give you the heads up on filmmaking quality and content so that you can decide whether or not you want to spend time or money or both watching a particular film. So today the movie I'm reviewing is called Back to Black. This biopic or biopic of Amy Winehouse is in theaters as well as playing on Fandango at Home on Prime Video and Apple TV. The movie is rated R. It's two hours and two minutes long. And my overall movie review mom grade is a B minus. So I will give you an overview in a nutshell first, and then I'll point out things I liked, things I didn't, tips for parents, themes worth talking about, funny lines, interesting lines, and we'll finish up with recommendations for other films that are sort of similar that I think that you might also like or maybe even like better than this one. But first, today's video is brought to you by the Amy Winehouse Back to Black Grammy winning album. So click on the link down below if you don't own this album. Some people have called this the greatest album of this century, and it is a pretty doggone good one. Now, this is an affiliate link, so it won't cost you any more to buy the album, but Amazon will send me a few little pretty pennies just for telling you about it and making you aware of it in case you didn't know. All right, so back to the movie. In a nutshell, the story is based on the true events of the life of Amy Winehouse during her adolescence into adulthood. Featured is the creation of this best-selling album of the, the last generation. I don't know if you could, if you agree with that or you're like, yeah, no, it was good, but I don't know about the best, but it is pretty doggone good and it is Grammy winning. The film was directed by Sam Taylor Johnson. Writing credits go to Matt Greenhall. So quick tips for parents. I think kids are going to be bored unless they're already huge Amy Winehouse fans. So it's certainly not for young children. There is profanity, including F-bombs. There is a lot of alcohol, cigarettes, and drug use portrayed. We see a lot of skin in revealing outfits and even some nudity, mostly uh, the backside of a man as he's laying in bed. So we just see, you know, no clothes on him in that. Uh, at another point, we see him not wearing a shirt. There's an unmarried couple and they go at it in bed, but we mostly see them wearing clothes. We just know that's where that's headed. And then we watch Amy actually get several tattoos. And then we see a woman go to rehab. Now, if you know Amy Winehouse, you know that she died from an overdose, perhaps a cocktail of alcohol and drugs, and which was devastating. People were shocked because she was only 27 years old. However, in the movie, we don't see any of that. The movie just ends and then we see the written words on the screen, how she died and just how devastating that was to the music world. So some of the themes that are illustrated very well are self-destructive behaviors, addiction, mourning and grief, toxic relationships. And really the bulk of the movie is about this toxic relationship. But now I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me give you some of the list of things that I really liked about the movie. I like a lot of Amy Winehouse's music, but I didn't really know anything about her life so much or how she got her start really. Marissa Abella does a fantastic job portraying this talented singer, but she truly sparkles as herself in the film. And she even did most of the singing after extensive training to sound like the real Amy Winehouse. The movie does a good job illustrating her rebellious nature and vulnerability. Some people have even said that it shows her as being a total brat. But again, the sparkling eyes of Marissa Abella make me see her and be really excited to see what else she can do. So I'm excited to see her next movie. I love that Leslie Manville is in this movie. I love anything that she does. She is such a delight and such a classic actress. All of the cast members really did an outstanding job and include Eddie Marson and Jack O'Connell, among many, many others. We get to hear some really great music. And I think one of the most sad things about this movie is just 
thinking about all of the great, wonderful music we could have had, had Amy not died at such a young life. I mean, she could still be alive today, pumping out incredible hits. So it's just sad what we lost, as well, of course, sad that we lost such a young woman in her prime and, um, and what could have been. All right, so on to the list of things that I didn't like or just thought could have been done differently or better. For example, American audiences may have a really hard time understanding everything that's said because of the thick British accents. Now, it's a unique accent to a specific region of the United Kingdom. And a few times I found myself leaning in like, what? What'd they say? What? And so if you choose to watch this at home, Turn on those captions so you can read whatever it is that you're missing. The story ultimately is super choppy, skipping a lot of what could have been interesting details, which also make this timeline confusing. So, for example, one minute we see her living at home with her parents, and then the next minute she's in this other place living on her own. And we're like, oh, OK, I guess time passed, but we're not really told how much time and um, and other things like that. There were plenty of interesting things in her early life that are just not shared at all. It's definitely not a full uh, unveiling of every detail of her life. And like I said, if you're hoping to learn about Amy's life, you won't really learn that much other than she was obsessed with Blake, this man that she had a toxic relationship with jazz music and alcohol and some drugs later on. Now, whenever I watch movies, I um, write down funny lines and interesting lines simply so I can share them with you so you get a taste for the quality of writing. And so you can see all of them on my written review at moviereviewmom.com. All right, so one funny line is when Blake and Amy first meet, they're in a bar and Blake kind of looks over at Amy and he says, I like your tattoo. And then she says, I like yours. And then he says to the bartender, get her a drink quick. She likes my tattoo. <laughs> Later, we find out he has a girlfriend and she's just like, what? You were flirting with me. All right. There were a ton of really interesting lines. For example, uh, Amy's family, her dad and her brother in particular, see that she's got a problem with substance abuse. And so she tells her dad, music is my rehab, dad. It always has been. And another point, she says, I don't do anything I don't want to do. And of course, we know that song, you know, about her going to rehab. And she's going to say no, no, no. Uh, but she actually does go to rehab. And we see her spending a little bit of time there, but not a ton of time. A line that we hear at the very beginning of the movie before we see her. So we hear her voiceover and she says, I want people to hear my voice and just forget their troubles for five minutes. She's having a conversation to somebody else and she says, I don't bang out 10 hits by lunch. I need to live my songs. So that's what I'm going to do. And we definitely see the songs that she sings in the movie absolutely match with what is going on in her life. Uh, they always say, write what you know. And that's absolutely what she did with her music. She also said at another point, I don't write songs to be famous. I write songs because I've got to make something good out of something bad. And I love that that's her process to work through some of the challenges and some of the sorrows that she has in her life. And then another time she says, I write songs because I don't know what I'd do if I didn't. Now, while I was watching this movie, I instantly thought of three songs that I wanna recommend. The first one is actually a documentary from 2015 called Amy that dives much deeper into the life of Amy Winehouse with the details that you might want. And actually there have been many, many documentaries about Amy Winehouse, as you can imagine, um, but that's a pretty good one. Another, not documentary, but another movie about a singer based on the true story is Selena. That one came out in 1997. And like Amy, she had a, a a death that was way too early in her life. She just died way too young before she was able to share all that was in her heart and all of her talent. And then finally, another one is Bohemian Rhapsody. And now the music is obviously very different, but it's also based on 
incredible musicians, specifically the lead singer of Queen and his early demise. I, again, just adored Queen. And I just am so heartbroken of all the music that we didn't get because of his passing too soon. All right, hopefully my reviews were helpful. Uh, if they were, give them a thumbs up, comment down below, subscribe, you know the drill. And when you get a minute, run over to my Facebook group called Movie Review Mom. You can find me all over social media, uh, as well as on Instagram under Movie Review Mom and as my author name, Trina Boyce. Have a fantastic day and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.